What's up everybody, Dark Cosmic here, back with another astrology video. Today I want to talk about having your Venus in the third house. So what is it like to have your Venus in the third house? When somebody has their Venus in the third house, this is very similar to having Venus in Gemini. The, um, the planet Venus is, um, it is a feminine planet. It represents love, it represents affection, it represents stability, it represents um, cultivation, like um, kind of like when you're watering a plant and you're trying to, you're trying to take care of things in a way that they can last forever. It represents, um, it represents relationships, one-on-one -on -one connections, not just like, um, cause their relationships can be, you know, sexual relationships, um, or platonic. So, um, but mo for the most part, it's, it's either the relationship that you have with the opposite sex or the relationship that, that you have that you are creating a sexual relationship or the relationship that you have where you're just dealing with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. That is, that is a relationship because you are, you guys are relating, you know, in a, uh, in a sphere, in a, in an area, you guys have created a ship and you are now relating. So it, it governs the, that one-on-one -on -one relationship as well, <clears throat> regardless if you guys are sexual or, sexual or not. So, um, Venus is like a princess. She is um, the beginning stages of becoming a woman. Um, from puberty to um, maybe like 20 years old, 21, where they're finally going out into the world and they're exploring. This is what Venus energy is. It, it is a lounging type of energy, a luxury type of energy, enjoying the finer things in life as well. So what I like to do is I like to take the planet and I like to look at it as an individual and then I like to look at the house that it's in as a location that a place that it's going to go that this planet or individual is going to go so Venus is this person that I described and she has all the qualities that I just described now we're going to take her and place her into the third house what is the third house third house is ruled by Gemini Gemini is about communication it's about intellect logic it is a creative house too but creative more in a way of just because there's so many ideas to work with. Um, Gemini rules the hands. Gemini is about writing. It is about um, a good way to understand Gemini is to understand its other half, which is Virgo, uh, because they're both governed by Mercury. And so Gemini is the information or the third house because third house represents Gemini. That is the information that you gather that is just factual. Um, but it, it, is, it isn't readily available right now, but you can research it. And, and based off your research, you can, you can see that it is factual. Now, Virgo energy, the other side, is reality. So it's something that you can prove right now. You don't need to research it because it's happening right now. It's a physical, tangible thing. So the Gemini is also, this third house energy slash Gemini energy is also... You know, it's about data. It's about information. So we're placing Venus into this house of information, house of communication. So she is kind of like uh, at an editor's office at a newspaper, you know, newspaper slash editor's office now. And she's learning to love in this way. And so what does this create? This creates an individual that is very good with their words. Um, Venus isn't at home here, but she enjoys being here because now she gets to talk about her love. These are, these are people that are great poets, poet, like they can write poetry and they can write love stories. They can write, they can, uh, basically talk the pants off a lot of people because they just know how to speak the language of love. Um, voices to them are really important. If you have a voice that is unattractive, they're not going to like you. And they themselves might have a very attractive voice, a very good way of speaking that is attractive too, because they govern the voice, they govern communication, or they just might be able to put the right words together to make you fall in love with them. These are the slick talkers. Um, these are the, um, the people that know a lot about love for the most part in an informational way. So they might not have experience in love, but they probably have done a lot of research. So when they talk to you, they seem like a fucking expert. So, um, so I would say the pros 
with having this placement. The pros is you may know a lot about love. You may know a lot about how to love somebody. That doesn't mean you're going to act on it because you might not have the experience. So you may know something, but you don't know. You don't have the experience, so you don't always know how to deal with it, one. And two, you may know something, but you're not going to act on it. So these doesn't mean that they're going to act on it. They just know a lot of things about love and about um, the opposite sex or about relationships. They just have a lot of information and data because they're in the house. They're in the newspaper editor. They always get the news about the latest news about love. They get that information all the time. This is where they're, this is how their Venus functions. Pardon me. So the negative qualities of this is kind of uh, having a superficial way of looking at love. Pardon me. So sometimes these people kind of kind of see love kind of like um, there's kind of like it just la lacks depth and it lacks experience. Sometimes they may act like they know a lot when they haven't experienced shit or sometimes so they can come off as a know, know it all when it comes to love. Um, sometimes, you know, it can they can come off as shallow because it can be like the only thing that's important to them in love is like the new trendy thing that's in the news today or you know the new meme like that's they somehow connect these type of things to love and so it'd be like the type of post where if your man don't do this he's trash you know and, and it's like they just collect all this information all the time and they have a new way of thinking because they're mentally based so it's a new way of thinking now because they're just collecting all this data all the time about how you should perceive love without having any fucking experience, right? So that's the negative qualities of this. Back to the positive qualities. They may know a fuck ton about love, which is a great thing. They um, more than likely probably had a lot of partners um, and that can enhance them because then now they have the experience. But if they were acting in a way where they were being shallow about it and, you know, ending relationships just because of superficial reasons, then it doesn't matter the experience that they had because it was never deep. They never fought in the long haul with a partner to figure things out and really understand them on a deeper level. So um, that might be the downfall of this placement. But other than that, I would say great communicators in love, really good at expressing how they feel and talking about what's on their mind. Um, for the most part, they want to laugh. They want a, somebody that's fun-loving, youthful, and um, can add. So the way to, to get into their hearts is for somebody to be able to add depth to the many thoughts and ideas that, that they have within them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.